You must have heard the old saying that a bad carpenter blames his tools. But if you're out shooting birds and wildlife and you have a camera or a lens that's not made for the job at hand, then you're not going to get consistently sharp pictures. So let's look at some photos and understand what it takes to click something like this. Autofocus speed, autofocus accuracy, fast frame rates, large buffer sizes, camera and lens stabilization. All these things matter a lot. And very often, these things are the difference between a good sharp photo and out of focus blurry photos. I've been using the Canon 100 to 400 Mark II lens on the 7D Mark II camera. Sometimes I'll even use the 1.4 extender and I'm just very happy with what this setup does for me. Let's talk more about some of the other settings. I always set my image quality to RAW, so that way it gives me more flexibility at the time of post-production. I can slightly brighten or darken the pictures, adjust white balance and things like that. However, it's very important to get the picture right in the camera and uh, software such as Lightroom and Photoshop can slightly enhance it, but it's no substitute. I mean, you can't shoot a bad, uh, you can't get the picture wrong in the camera and then look up to post-production to correct it. To get the bird in focus, I select a single focus point and aim for the eye. I prefer to use a single focus point rather than leave it up to the camera to decide where to focus. Because if I'm photographing a bird against the bright blue sky, my camera might just like the blue of the sky and focus on the sky and consequently my bird will be completely out of focus and I don't want that. The Canon 7D Mark II lets you select a smaller focus area within the single focus point for even more accuracy. The autofocus speed is super fast even in challenging low light conditions and when photographing fast moving subjects. The camera motors along at 10 frames per second which is phenomenal. My autofocus mode is always set on continuous. What that means is as long as I have a finger on my shutter release button, the camera constantly updates focus. This is especially helpful when I'm shooting a bird or animal that's constantly moving. Now if a small bird is just perched there and isn't moving too much, then you will be able to get a sharp picture at slower shutter speeds. However, if the bird suddenly takes off, then that picture will be completely shaky. So it's better to keep a faster shutter speed to anticipate action. For shooting consistently sharp photos of birds in flight, I keep my shutter speed to 1 4000th of a second. In lower light conditions, sometimes I get lucky at 1 1600th of a second or 1 2000th of a second. But at 1 4000th of a second, most times I'm certain that my picture will be sharp. And that means pumping my ISO higher. Present day cameras produce outstanding image quality even at higher ISOs. So I don't hesitate to bump my ISO to about 1600. Some cameras give you excellent image quality even at higher ISOs, higher than 1600. The options are to end up with a sharp photo that's slightly grainy or a clean photo that's completely shaky. The choice is obvious, isn't it? On my 100 to 400 Mark II lens, I'm generally shooting wide open at 5.6. That's the aperture value of 5.6. Occasionally, I'll take it to 6.3 or 7.1 if I want more details, more clarity in the background. When using the 1.4 extender, I have no choice but to shoot at f8, which is the widest possible aperture when using a teleconverter. Of course, the stabilization is on at all times and that compensates for small vibrations. There are some other settings that will slow your camera down and I recommend that you switch them off. High ISO noise reduction, active delighting on a Nikon, image optimization on a Canon, HDR, things like that. Things like this can be done in Lightroom or Photoshop or any other image editing software and you don't want these things to be processed in the camera. As a result, you won't get your 10 frames per second. It'll only do about six or seven frames per second. And that could be the difference between getting that crucial moment or missing it entirely. The comments are open and I'd be very happy to talk to you about camera settings. If you have invested in the gear and you're not getting sharp pictures or you're not getting the level of uh, 
sharpness that you expect from your gear. I'll be happy to talk to you about the settings that you've used and what you can do to improve the sharpness and accuracy of your shooting. And uh, if we haven't met before, I'm Girish Menon and I teach photography workshops and courses online. You can be based anywhere in the world and still learn photography from me. How cool is that? These are not pre-recorded videos that you sit and watch by yourself. I'll actually be present on a live virtual call and on a live video call and I'll show you how to use your camera in the manual mode so you can start clicking awesome pictures of anything. Please log on to my website www.girishmenon.com to have a look at the workshops and courses that I offer. I look forward to hearing from you soon.